Hello, hello, Privateer FX coming at you here, just pre-FOMC, putting in some shifts here in Abu Dhabi, man, I am working like a fucking mule, I tell you what, I mean, those of you who know me know that um, I don't have a great history of working for other people, one of the reasons I became a trader is because I uh, don't, I don't really suck a mean dick which is kind of something you kind of need to do to work well for somebody. Historically, I'm not that great at that. Um, but I tell you what, the dudes that I work for, or the dude specifically who is effectively my boss, although he treats me like a peer, um, he's a ledge. He's a fucking ledge. And I will fucking plow the earth for this guy. And it's amazing. I mean, I know he's not listening to this, so I can say this shit, um, but uh, makes all the difference in the world, I'll tell you what. Anyway, uh, FOMC on the on the, uh, on the calendar tonight, should be interesting, Jay Powell on the turntable, what's he going to do? I don't really know what he's going to do, he's going to try and sort of balance between like shit's getting fixed and be careful we don't want to like lean on this being fixed too quickly because there's a lot inherently wrong uh with the states rather than um try and decipher the gobbledygook and the circular language and the bureaucratic nonsense that's going to come out of his mouth i suggest you just look at this chart This is the 10-year yield. Obviously, we're at uh, close to the year's highs. This chart's driving everything. The higher this goes, the more pressure there'll be on equity. So if we break through 170, equities will get slapped. On the same token, if we break back through 160 convincingly, especially if we close below sort of 155 on the day, if there's a big move, that is really positive for risk. Same thing goes with the currency trade, but it's just less spectacular, right? I mean, currencies are just boring. It's boring monkey balls. I mean, could anything be more boring than monkey balls? Maybe sweaty monkey balls would be, like, moderately more boring than just monkey balls. Uh, but uh, G7 reminds me of monkey balls right now. Dick in a box, whatever, whatever beautiful metaphor you want to use um, so I mean if yield goes higher see dollar yen may jump up to 110 euro dollar may I don't know clip uh, 11840 um, but it's just not really outsized stuff right there's no positioning in currencies right now uh, people just don't care about them. This is an equities trade if you're going to trade correlation. Or if you're not going to trade correlation, just trade the goddamn bonds, right? I mean, if he's dovish, buy bonds. If he's hawkish, sell bonds. If you don't like bonds, same thing. If he's dovish, buy stocks. If he's hawkish, sell stocks. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, um... You know he's going to try and be dovish. You know the beginning's going to be dovish. How do you decipher this? And, and it, it's not even about deciphering it. It's about figuring out as fast as you can what the entire marketplace thinks of his little song and dance, his little uh, geriatric shrill. How are we going to decide what the whole market's going to do? I'll tell you how we're going to decide. We're going to watch the yield on the 10-year. Really not much more to say on this. Um, FOMCs have been dick in a box for the most part uh, over the last, you know, into the yelling sessions. Just, you know, mean reversion bullshit. Uh, so there's no reason to expect anything different from that. But if you see an outsize moved in yield, then you can make a play. Elsewhere... Uh, we talked about Bitcoin up through 60 and how it looked a bit sick when it when it uh, was back down through 60. Sure enough, uh, dropped a good 11% there, down to 54. 
I gotta tell you, uh, that's not coffee tonight, by the way, either. Happy thank, uh, happy Thanksgiving, happy St. Patrick's Day, people. Um, 53.4, the low. This is just sort of stuck here. I mean, eventually they're going to take out stops through 40, and there's going to be a little mini panic. Um, but uh, the wise guys I know are going to be scooping that shit. So, you know, maybe try and be a wise guy instead of, uh, you know, being like a drunk frog, tadpole. Um, maybe try and scoop some below 40 on a sort of tactical monthly trade. Crude uh, did not like it up towards, uh, this is WTI, uh, did not like it up towards 70 bucks there. We've been waiting for this to turn. Uh, it's not really turning uh, all that well, got to say. 63, 68. I think we started to get bearish at this right around 56, 57. Maybe this day here. Um, this shows you how good I am at crude. I got bearish, I think, below this low. Yeah, around 57 I got bearish. Never even traded there, just straight higher. Bang. Um, but crude looks like she's rolling over. Um, you might want to just do the opposite what I say in crude, but just pointing that out because some people are asking me what I think about crude. Probably because they want to fade my shit. And gold, I get a lot of questions about gold. Gold's just, you know, whatever. He's, if he's dovish, if yields go lower, gold goes higher. If he's hawkish, gold gets punished. Um, this isn't really an inflation trade. This isn't really of a store of value trade. Gold is now just at the rhythm and the mercy of yields. So it's sort of world of one trade tonight, Bitcoin aside, but there's nothing to do with Bitcoin at 55, so... We're just watching the 10-year yield, and we're going to react accordingly. Good luck out there, people. Talk to you tomorrow.